Hello there, this is Shravan here and this is a learn to play video brought to you by The Boardroom. Tiny Towns is an abstract strategy pattern building game designed by Peter McPherson. The game plays one to six players. As the mayor of a tiny town, you build structures on a four cross four grid. This is your town grid. As resources are scarce in this kingdom, you cannot decline any resource offered. Your game ends when you have no further space left in your town grid to place a new resource. Now let's look at the setup. There are eight types of structures, seven common structures and one unique monument. Apart from the cottage, each category has four different variations of buildings. You can draft different types of buildings, but only one from each category is selected. Each structure has their own piece corresponding to their category, as you can see here. These are monuments. You deal two monument cards to each player in the beginning of the game. You get to keep only one as you can build only one per game. Each structure is built according to their unique pattern as depicted on the card. They eat score points in their own unique way or offer benefits during the game. There are five different types of resources used to build the structures. Yellow, blue, gray, red and brown. Keep them within reach of all the players and now we can start the game. Each player plays their turn simultaneously and each turn goes in three steps. Step one, one of the players is the master builder. The first player to be the master builder is the player who has recently constructed something in real life. Step two, the master builder calls out a resource and all players must place that resource cube in an empty space in their town grid. You cannot place a resource cube on a square that has a building or another resource cube. There are certain exceptions depending on the black structure built or your monument. There's also a certain amount of space available on the board. So you will have to be careful when placing resources and structures as once placed, their position cannot be changed. On a turn after a resource is placed, if the pattern is present on your board, you can remove the structure. You can remove the resource and place the corresponding buildings on any of the squares that were used to build that structure. Remember, you cannot reuse or double use your resource cubes to build multiple structures. Once all players have chosen to build or pass, the master builder piece moves to the player to the left. If the player to the left has no more empty spaces on their turn grid, they pass their turn till the end of the game. Now let's look at how you score points. You can use any combination, but let's take the recommended set for this setup. The cottage scores three points at the end of the game if it is fed. Unfed cottages do not score any points, but you can still build them. The farm comes next. It does not score any points, but it feeds up to four cottages when built anywhere on the map. The well. The well, it scores one point for every cottage that it is adjacent to. This well scores two points. The theater and the chapel are up next. The chapel scores one point for each fed cottage in your town and the theater scores one point for every unique building on the same row and column as the theater. The factory does not offer any points at the end of the game, 
but when constructed, you can place any resource cube on it. Now this resource cube is a wild resource for you whenever another player calls out that particular resource. The tavern scores points for the number of taverns in your town as indicated on the card, as simple as that. The monument is unique to you and your town and it may give you victory points at the end of the game or immediate or recurring benefits during the game or both. It's kept hidden until you build it and there can only be one monument in a town. When everyone has finished their town, the scores are tallied based on the structures built. Players may have ended their games at different times. That is very normal. You remove all the resource cubes that are remaining and each empty square is a negative point. In case of a tie, the player who has the fewest turns as master builder wins. If the tie persists, then the player with the least empty squares left is the winner. If you're still tied, you share the victory. Thank you, and now you know how to play Tiny Towns.